It's 8 o'clock, this is Sky News Breakfast, our top stories. The head of Russia's mercenary Wagner Group claims to have captured Russia's military headquarters in the south of the country as he's accused of trying to stage a coup. Russian mercenary rebels appear to have taken control of a second town now as their apparent mutiny gathers momentum. We're going to take you straight to Moscow, uh, where we're hearing from President Putin in a this recorded address. This is heroic. And last night I spoke to the commander of the southern uh, uh, troops. This is a criminal, adventuristic campaign. It is equivalent to armed mutiny. Russia will defend itself and repel, repel this uh, inimical move. We are fighting for the life and the security of our citizens and our territorial integrity. It is a question of Russia's millennial history. This requires the unity of everyone and the consolidation of all elements. Everything has to be done in order to in order to put this danger to rest. It is an attempt to subvert us from inside. This is treason in the face of those uh, who are fighting on the front. This is an, a, a stab in the back of our troops and the people of Russia. Intrigues, clashes, and so on has led in the First World War to a tremendous uh, turmoil and uprest, and that uh, resulted in the tragedy of the First World War, and the Russians were the victims of that. And this was <coughs> affected by a number of opportunistic elements. We will not let this uh, be repeated. We will defend our motherland including overcoming a number of obstacles. This is treason and it is about the ambition of inimical forces. The heroes who uh, freed the areas, the occupied areas of uh, Ukraine, are trying to re-establish the hegemony, the domination of the uh, Russian territories. We are trying fighting against anarchy and uh, capitulation. This internal mutiny is a mortal blow to us. It is a blow to our people as a whole. And measures will be very hard. These people who are responsible will certainly be brought to justice on behalf of our people. The armed forces and other uh, force agencies have received instructions and restrictive measures have been taken in Moscow, Moscow region and lots of other regions. The situation around Rostov remains, however, very complicated. As President of Russia and Commander-in-Chief, as a citizen 
of Russia. We are doing, I am doing everything to repel this attack and to ensure the freedom and security of our citizens. Those who uh, mutiny have, have betrayed Russia. And I urge anybody involved in it not to, uh, to, to cease any kind of pa uh, participation in armed conflict. We will certainly defend what is here and uh, hallowed to the Russian people. President Putin there responding to that breaking news overnight uh, that the head of the Wagner mercenary group has called uh, for armed rebellion. President Putin calling it a criminal act, an attempt to subvert us from the inside. He said it's treason. This is a stab in the back of our troops and the people of Russia. Uh, this internal mutiny is a mortal blow to us said President Putin. Well, let's speak now to Sky's international affairs editor, Dominic Waghorn, who's live in the central Ukrainian city of Dnipro. Certainly uh, dramatic developments, uh, Dominic. And uh, President Putin responding there to that call for armed rebellion overnight from the head of the Wagner Group, who also uh, told the Russian people that the whole Ukraine invasion was based on lies. President Putin responding there. Yes, it couldn't have been a more unequivocal condemnation of what uh, his old friend uh, and former ally Yevgeny Prigozhin is up to. Uh, Vladimir Putin called this an armed mutiny. He didn't mince his words at all. Uh, he called it a rebellion. He said it's treason and, a, and uh, a stab on the back of the troops, as you say, and the people of Russia. And he said the heroes that freed the occupied areas of Ukraine are trying to re-establish Russian hegemony against anarchy. And this is a mo mortal blow uh, to us and against them. And he then issued a warning saying the measures against this will be very harsh. These people will be brought to justice on behalf of our people. He says, I'm doing everything I can to repel this attack. And he's urging everybody... Uh, not to get involved. And what's interesting is Prigozhin, who is this mercenary leader, the head of the Wagner Group, a brutal uh, and volatile character who has been critical of the Russian military leadership, but not of Putin directly, throughout his tirades for the last few weeks um, over this war. In his rant last night, although he said the war was based on lies, he also did not mention Putin by name. And what he's saying at the moment, as he sits on Rostov on Don, which is the town that really is the heart of the planning and the command and control system for Russia's uh, war in Ukraine, what he's saying is this isn't a mutiny. He says it's not an armed rebellion. He just wants to speak to Putin's generals, his chief of staff and his defence minister. And he's holding that town until Gerasimov, the chief of staff, and Sergei Shoigu, the uh, defence minister, heads down there to talk to him, he says. So he's not presenting this as a mutiny, but Vladimir Putin clearly sees it as a mutiny, as a direct threat. So there is the battle line drawn between the government, the Russian official government, the Kremlin, uh, and this mercenary upstart who seems to have started a, an armed rebellion against uh, Putin in everything but name. But what is interesting now is where does this go from here? What is the momentum behind that armed rebellion? And reports suggest that Prigozhin's forces have not just taken Rostov on Don, but also the town of Voronezh, a Russian security uh, source telling Reuters news agency that the Wagner group, the mercenary group that Prigozhin commands, now has control of Voronezh. Now, that is halfway between Rostov on Don uh, uh, to Moscow. And uh, in his rant last night, Prigozhin said that uh, he would head to Moscow in a march of 25,000 men. So uh, last night, we were wondering whether he was just issuing a drunken rant. Uh, people wondering whether he's actually gone mad. But he clearly has a plan, a pretty elaborate plan so far, that he's putting into effect. He's taken Rostov on Don, he's taken this key headquarters of the special military operation, and he now, uh, reportedly at least, has taken Voronezh uh, and is heading towards Moscow, certainly in terms of what he's saying rhetorically. So it is a momentous time in this war and a momentous time for Russia, but Putin is making it very clear where he sees this armed rebellion and how he intends to deal with it if he has the capability to do so.
Certainly a, a dramatic and developing story. Dominic, thank you very much. Uh, and that response from President Putin that we've had in the last few moments does suggest he is taking uh, this threat very seriously. Uh, here's a reminder of this new video which has been released this morning in which Evgeny Prigozhin, the head of the Wagner mercenary group, appears to now be in the Russian city of Rostov-on-Don, which he claims Wagner forces now control. Uh, and just to remind viewers, that is uh, the Russian military command centre uh, in the south of the country. Now, Mr Prigozhin says he'll go all the way to topple Russia's military leadership, but denies he's staging a coup. As I say, Rostov-on-Don is the nerve centre for much of Russia's military operations in Ukraine. It's quite a morning. Uh, let's speak to former British Army Intelligence and Security Officer Philip Ingram, who's here in the studio with me. Uh, this story is moving very quickly, Philip. It broke overnight, uh, this very news that indeed, Evgeny yes. Prigozhin has called for armed rebellion of the Russian leadership. Now, interestingly, he's not... He's not mentioned Vladimir Putin specifically, has he? His issue seems to be with the head of Russia's defence forces. And he's been criticising the uh, Russian defence minister, Shoigu, um, and General Gerasimov, who is, for, is commanding overall operations in Ukraine for some time, criticising what they're doing, and has accused them in the past of uh, attacking... Uh, his Wagner forces as they withdrew from Bakhmut and then uh, yesterday he accused them of attacking them in one of their camps. Uh, this seems to have pushed him over the edge a little bit. But interestingly, his language is still focused on the military side, on um, Defence Minister Shoigu, on General Gerasimov and overall command. And Rostov on Dom is... Um, uh, actually quite significant, because that's the headquarters of the Southern Group of Forces. As you said, that's the, where the whole of the operations in, into Ukraine are being coordinated. Um, and whenever um, uh, Prigozhin went in there and sat down in the military headquarters, first of all, there was a cooperative talking going on with the deputy head of the GRU, who, which is the Russian First Directorate, their military intelligence organisation, a very powerful organisation, both militarily and politically. Um, and, it, and it's interesting to see how this dynamic's playing out. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because, obviously, we don't know how this is going to play out. We don't know what kind of mutiny or attempted rebellion we're going to see here. But what we have seen is a video from Evgeny Prigozhin, who is the leader of Wagner Group, fighting in tandem with the Russian army, who has said to the Russian people that the whole Ukrainian invasion was based on lies. And that is something that Russian people have not heard on Russian state television until now. Well, some of his language is really quite interesting. And um, the difficulty that we have here is a lot of this is coming out from reports that we're getting on, on Telegram. Prigozhin's putting his own videos out. Other organisations are putting their videos out. And, and a lot of this will include a lot of disinformation. So we have to take everything with a pinch of salt and just be very careful in our analysis. But some of the language that Prigozhin has been using is, is the historical language that um, the Russians have traditionally used whenever they've been trying to suggest that uh, the Tsar has been badly advised by his advisers. That's the language that Prigozhin is using um, whenever he's criticising Shoigu, the defence minister, and Gerasimov, um, in uh, who's in charge of military operations. And he's, he seems to be almost protecting Putin. Putin has come out quite hard against him um, in Putin's statement now. So a lot to play out. Yeah, now, we're looking at pictures uh, of Bakhmut, of course, we've seen the, the battle for Bakhmut for months. That was one of Russia's very few victories recently, which was carried out by Wagner uh, fighters. Uh, and interestingly, this whole fallout has come about. I mean, there have been tensions for some time, but this fallout has come about overnight because Evgeny Prigozhin accuses the Russian leadership of attacking his own forces. Now, there's no evidence of that yet, but that is an interesting development. Yeah, yeah Prigozhin makes a lot of accusations and provides very little evidence. Um, and anything that he brings out where he suggests it's evidence, um, he, he had this very horrific video he put out with lots of bodies of the Wagner forces that he said had been killed because he hadn't been supplied the ammunition. Um, Prigozhin's position was made by Vladimir Putin. Their relationship was very close indeed uh, and synergistic. And, and Prigozhin wouldn't be as strong as he was if it wasn't for Putin's support. Um, and interestingly, the Russian first director at this GRU, um, their military intelligence organisation, helped make um, Wagner's position within the, the conflict. 
private military companies are, are officially in Russian constitution illegal, um, and that he's been allowed to get away with this. Bakhmut was... Was it a victory or wasn't it? The Ukrainians have taken a lot of territory back to the north of Bakhmut and to the south of Bakhmut ever since um, uh, Wagner Group withdrew and were replaced by regular Russian forces. So you know, he, he will be frustrated at the numbers of uh, casualties his group has suffered um, and the fact that it hasn't been exploited. Um, and certainly, just to remind viewers who are tuning in at uh, this developing story, uh, that the head of Russia's mercenary Wagner Group claims to have captured Russia's military headquarters in the south of the country. He's called for armed uh, rebellion. Uh, and certainly uh, security has been stepped up in Moscow with riot police and the National Guard scrambled uh, to protect government buildings. We've heard from President Putin uh, in the last 15 minutes uh, who has called this a criminal act and has said Russia will defend itself. Certain hei certainly heightened tensions in Russia uh, and we will stay across this story for you and bring you updates as we get them throughout the programme. Stay with us on Sky News Breakfast.